All right, so just making a quick demo video uh, to show some tools that would be suitable for our student with a processing speed uh, learning disability. Uh, a couple of really useful websites for the secondary math program, uh, and, and really they're not just for grade 10, but for any grade, are, are Desmos. Desmos is graphing software as well as GeoGebra. So we'll start with a really quick uh, introduction to Desmos. You'd go to uh, www.desmos.com and then launch the calculator from that. Uh, there is an iPad app. This is the website, totally free. Um, you could create an account and sign in if you wanted to save graphs, but usually when you're playing with graphs with a class, uh, all you'd have to do is just have them go to the website. So since our student has a laptop, this would be a great place to uh, have them do some graphing. So on the left-hand portion of the page here, we have an input bar. Uh, if I click on that, you'll notice down below a keyboard comes up. You can use the keyboard on your laptop or PC, or you can actually type with the keys here. I'm going to put that keyboard down. I'm going to hide it. And I'm just going to use my keypad to enter in some graphs here. So for example, in grade 10 applied math, uh, we'd want to be talking about linear graphs. So I might punch in y equals, I don't know, 2x minus 5. And when I do that, you'll notice over here my graph pane. Uh, I have the graph showing up. I can zoom that in or out. If I zoom in and zoom out, uh, I'll see different parts of the graph. I can move things around. I can click and drag. And I can highlight things like the x-intercept right here. If I click on that, it'll maintain as, as a point, and I'll go down here and uh, again click on this intercept, and they'll both show up on my graph. Uh, so I can have multiple graphs on the screen at the same time. Uh, a really, really powerful uh, tool for Desmos, though, is the sliders, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if I X this out, uh, we're back to our uh, regular grid here again. Uh, I'm going to put type in Y equals MX plus B. Now you'll notice when I did that, uh, it recognizes Y and X as variables that should be there in terms of drawing a graph on a Cartesian plane, but it also sees that there's an M and a B, and it prompts me, do I want to add a slider? And so I'm going to click on All, and when I do that, I end up with uh, M equals 1 and B equals 1. And what students can do is they can do a couple different things. They can actually click and drag this and play with what happens with M as I change the value of the slope of my line, and then also B, what happens as I change the y-intercept. So where our student uh, experiences a processing speed uh, difficulty, uh, this tool basically allows them to draw, I mean, you know, tens if not hundreds of different graphs very efficiently. Uh, we're not wasting paper, we're not getting out the ruler and the graph paper. We're simply punching it in the calculator and exploring. And it's very easy for a student to see the effect that the B variable has on our graph, as well as the M variable. Uh, if you want to, as well over here on the uh, far left hand side, you can click on the play button and it actually will animate that for you. So you can have the students actually see uh, you know, what happens as the graph gets very, very steep. And then coming back down, we can pause it and talk about what happens as, as the graph slope approaches zero, horizontal line, and then negative slopes as well. So very easy to make connections. And then also in the grade uh, 10 course, we'll get into quadratics. So I'm going to wipe this out really quickly. We'll delete all of these. And again, if we're playing with transformations of a quadratic, we would punch in y equals a. I'm just going to punch this in in vertex form, so x minus h. I'll go over here to the power of 2 uh, plus k. And again, you'll notice that it realizes we shouldn't have anything but an x and a y in there, so I'm going to add sliders to all of these, which I'll do now. And now you can see my qu quadratic, my parabola. And we can ask students, okay, what happens to the quadratic as we play with the values for a? So as a changes, we can see our graph having a vertical stretch. The graph actually uh, is getting taller and narrower. And as we come back down, the graph gets shorter and wider to the point where if it's a negative, uh, then you're going to end up with a, a negative um, stretch or reflection, sorry, in the, in the x-axis and then back up again. And the same thing here for playing with your value for h and k. h would be a horizontal translation. So if I move that over, we'll see our parabola travel to the right and then travel to the left. And again, this. I mean, if you're looking at the way it was taught 10 years ago, you'd have students draw five, 10 different quadratic graphs on graph paper and try to uh, put those connections together. And same thing with the k value. The k value is your vertical translation. So I can 
drag that K value to the left and drag it to the right. And um, that's a very basic demonstration of Desmos, but it does highlight how we can be way more efficient, uh, especially for students who have a processing speed difficulty. Now, the other uh, piece of software I wanted to show you was something called GeoGebra. So GeoGebra is uh, kind of a combination of algebra and uh, geometry. Um, you'll notice uh, on the image on the home page, you can use this as graphing software, though I actually prefer Desmos. I find Desmos is a bit easier. And with GeoGebra, you have, you have to download. You can't just use it as a web-based tool. So I actually have clicked on download. I've gone through the process of downloading, and when you do that, you get this piece of software. So again, with Desmos, we could put a, an input in at the bottom. I could type it y equals 2x and hit enter and it does give me a line uh, so you can use it for graphing software but I'm going to clear that out Oops. I'll just start right over again with a new screen the nice thing about this is it allows us to play with some geometry you'll notice we have full uh, polygon tools up here we can create regular and rigid polygons vector polygons uh, lots of different geometry tools and circles uh, ellipses, hyperbolas, parabolas, conic sections, angles, and so on. There's all kinds of good stuff on here. So I'm just going to play with the polygon piece really quickly. So if I want to create a polygon, uh, I can just click, and as I click, I'm creating new um, vertices for a polygon. You'll notice if I go back to my starting point, it will complete that polygon. And over here on the left hand side, it tells me I've got a pentagon built. Actually, this poly one measure is actually the area of that figure. Uh, and then we have all the different points and the line segments and the distance is the line segment. So I can take those points and drag them around. Uh, if I take the select tool, sorry. So I'll move these around and when I move them around, you'll notice that I'm changing uh, over here my point, first of all, obviously my line segments, but also my area of my polygon. So now I have 26.61 uh, units, square units. And as I move this point around, you'll notice the number goes down a little bit and so on. So you can talk to students about the effect of changing points on the area of your polygon. Uh, another neat application of this, and again, this would be th something that um, in, a, in a traditional math class would take a lot of time, but I can do it really quickly um, with uh, GeoGebra is verifying things like the area of a triangle uh, is constant regardless of uh, its height. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put a horizontal line in at x, or sorry, y equals 4. And I'm going to build a polygon based on uh, some vertices. So I'll put a vertex down here at uh, 1, 0, maybe at uh, 8, 0, and then up here on my line somewhere. So if I know the area of a, for sorry, formula for the area of a triangle, uh, the area for this figure has a base of 7 units and a height of 4 units. So 1 half base times heights give me that my area over here is 14 square units. That, that's good. Uh, but the neat thing is that if I click that point C and I drag it around and I keep an eye over here on my area of my polygon, uh, you'll, you should notice that if I drag this over here, it doesn't matter, no matter how far over I go, my area should stay 14. And the reason that area stays 14 is because the length across the bottom here is still going to be 7 and the height, even though we have now uh, a triangle that's slanted way over to one side, the height of it's still measured perpendicular, so that height is still going to be 4. And I can take point C and I can move it all the way over to the right, I can drag it back to the middle, I can take it all the way over to the left, and again, these are things that without technology tools would take a significant amount of time and effort, especially for a student who experiences learning disabilities. And again, under the, the you know umbrella of universal design, um, this is necessary for some, but is universal for all the students who are in your math classrooms.